previously on The Way We Did It. We took the lands out to the Great Sand Dunes National Park. Before heading west to explore the Rio Grande River, where we deviated from the plan and put our fear of heights to the test at the Black Canyon of the Gunnison National Park. We left Lake City on our spontaneous adventure to the Black Canyon of the Gunnison National Park. Dave was able to book us a last minute campsite in Montrose, the only town in close proximity to the park. The road followed the Lake Fork Gunnison River until it branched off into the mountainous landscape. We spotted quite a few thunderstorms off in the distance, which prompted a flash flood warning for the entire area. The Blue Mesa Reservoir marked the halfway point of the trip. So we pulled over for a quick break to stretch our legs and take in the scenery. When we hit the road again, things got a little dicey. First, we ran into construction, where they were blasting away the hillside to make room to widen the highway. After squeezing our way through the narrow canyon, we then had to drive through some of the strongest winds we've ever encountered. I didn't document much as I was too busy hanging on for dear life until we safely made it to town. And just to give you an idea, this flag is relatively calm compared to what we just drove through. Now, let's check out the campground. We were staying at the Riverbend RV Park. It was one of the most manicured, beautifully landscaped campgrounds we've been to. The entire property was perfectly graded and covered with gravel. It was located right on the river and had several common areas like a fire pit, patios equipped with a grill, and a large grassy dog park. There were also several cabins and riverfront tent sites away from the RVs. We booked a standard back-end site with full hookups that overlooked a beautiful garden with fruit trees. We took the path to the other side of the fence to get a closer look. There were handfuls of ripe peaches and apples that still had a ways to go. Tucked away on the far end of the property was a log cabin that was very popular with the geese. Along our walk, Dave spotted a horseshoe pit and challenged me to a game, which we quickly discovered we were both pretty terrible at. Back at camp, we made dinner and watched TV before settling in for the night. We left the campground early the next day and drove to the Black Canyon of the Gunnison National Park. Since this was a last minute addition to our trip, we didn't really know what to expect. We knew the canyon is known for having some of the steepest cliffs in America, with sheer drops at nearly 3,000 feet the same height as the Burj Khalifa. Upon entering the park, we caught small glimpses of the top of the canyon. But it wasn't until we ventured down to the first overlook that we got a real sense of the landscape. Each overlook got more dramatic and more vertigo-inducing. Most of the overlooks didn't even have guardrails. The 
Black Canyon of the Gunnison is so steep and so narrow that parts of the gorge only receive about 30 minutes of sunlight a day. Several overlooks required hiking down short, flat trails that weave through a variety of desert vegetation. A little side note, Dave was very proud of his parallel parking job. Remember, this was only our third outing with the Lance. Our original plan was to visit the South Rim, then head to our campsite in Salida. But after speaking to a ranger about the North Rim, and that it was somehow even more dramatic than this, well, we had to go find out for ourselves. Because there's not a bridge across the canyon, it was an additional two to three hour drive to the other side. As soon as we crossed the Gunnison River, the road immediately climbed in elevation. We traveled through large groves of aspen trees, past yellow fields of sunflowers, and had a breathtaking view of the Morrow Point Reservoir. <laughs> it wasn't quite as sunny as it was at the South Rim. This ominous rainstorm was a little too close for comfort, but we had been pretty lucky with the weather so far and were hoping our luck continued. Park signs directed us down a dirt road. It didn't really feel like we were entering a national park. It was extremely secluded, we didn't pass a soul, and there wasn't the typical grandiose sign indicating we had arrived. But soon, the canyon came into view, and gigantic cracks in its rock wall appeared right beside the road. And as far as it being more dramatic than the South Rim, well, we'll let you decide. We know what side we prefer, but we'd love to hear which one you thought was more scenic. The South Rim's beautifully manicured overlooks or the more remote and rugged North Rim? Let us know in the comments below. As scary as the South Rim was with overlooks not having any guardrails, here we could literally drive our truck right up to the edge of the canyon. What better place to stop for lunch? And apparently have a dance party. Let's try this again. It was pretty surreal being the only ones on the North Rim. Outside of the Rangers, we saw one other car the entire time. This coyote even looked confused seeing us in the area. We understand why it's one of the least visited national parks in the country. Due to its remote location, it does take some planning to get here, but it's definitely worth the drive. We 
We left the Black Canyon of the Gunnison late in the day and started the long and rainy journey back to the campground. Next time on The Way We Did It. We are heading to Granby, Colorado for a week long experiment to see what it was like to live and work out of the Lance. If you'd like to join us on more adventures, be sure to like this video and click that subscribe button. Or for extra perks like your name in the end credits and travel guides to places in our videos, consider supporting us on Patreon so we can continue to show you the way we did it.